All right, guys, and welcome back to the GT3. Now, today was supposed to be the day that I do the next installment of the GT3 series because having lived with this car now for a week, it is mind-blowingly fantastic. However, if you've been watching my videos from the start, you'll notice that there's been this annoying underlying theme that has accompanied me every step of the way, and that's been the weather. And every time I turn that camera on and get it in a car, it's just something's against me. It's either pouring it down or snowing at times, ice, whatever, you name it, it's that. And I woke up this morning enthusiastic to do the next installment on this GT3. It transpires that it's been raining so hard overnight that the exit from my drive is even flooded. Um, and there's just mud and crap all over the roads. And Anyway, what I'm saying is the, the conditions aren't conducive to what I had in mind for this GT3 to give you guys the best experience of what this thing is like. So needless to say, when I opened the curtains first thing this morning, I was a bit pissed off. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna embrace this situation as best as I can and uh, yeah, make the most of it because it's not every day that you get a flood outside your doorstep. And I thought, you know what? Rather than in Introducing the GT3 this time, let's hop in something a bit more appropriate and make the most of these floods. Let's go check it out. So, welcome to this vast cave on wheels that is the Range Rover. So, I purposely haven't actually featured this car because I've got to be honest, and it might have been a little stupid of me, but I wasn't sure people would be that interested in it. And not because the Range Rover isn't an interesting car, it's more because I've sort of focused on supercars and sports cars that I thought, I don't know, I wasn't sure you guys would be overly interested in it because it's not uh, not the most uh, high octane of vehicles. When I picked up the GT3, we did go down in this car and I noticed in the comments, uh, quite a few people were asking about the Range Rover. Where's the Range Rover? What about the Range Rover? So sure enough, the weather is atrocious and what better time to whip out the tank than right now. Now, uh, you're probably thinking, when do I use this car? Well, you know, I was thinking this before I was about to film this clip, that the Range Rover is probably the most versatile car I can think of. It's the kind of vehicle that you can take to any occasion or you can use for almost anything. Uh, for example, a few days ago, I wanted to throw out all of the rubbish left over from Christmas time. Uh, dropped the seats, threw all the crap in the back, drove to the tip, threw it all in there. Literally that, that same night uh, after visiting the tip, I took four people out for a meal to a very nice restaurant. Yeah, it's just the kind of car that, that'll fit into any occasion. And that's, that's such a great trait. There are a few cars where you can be at the tip at one minute and then perhaps a polo match the next. I use this for all sorts of things. Even though I do use the R8 as my daily driver, although I have to be honest, the GT3 is starting to take over that role pretty quickly. Some people would say that I'm mad not to drive this daily, but there is a reason for that. And it's because while this is a fantastic all-round car, it's not the most dynamic of vehicles and even in my day-to-day -day driving I like to have a car which is darty and responsive for example even turning into that corner there the body roll is ridiculous it feels like I've got a concrete weight on the roof which actually that panoramic sunroof there 
probably isn't far off. So I don't drive this every day purely because uh, I just like my everyday drives to be a bit more sort of on it, really. I like them to be a dynamic driving experience. And this just doesn't give me that. But what it does give you is refinement, comfort, luxury, practicality, space for five people. And it's great for the occasions when you're being a little bit more sociable and you're taking out friends and family etc you know runs to the airport that type of thing but also where i live is in the middle of the countryside and case in point right now the weather is atrocious uh don't really feel like uh dragging the r8 or the gt3 or any other car um down these lanes because right now it is just horrendously filthy and this is the truck you know this is what it is i mean we refer to it as the truck <laughs> so yeah i guess that that sort of puts you in the frame of mind of how we feel about this car it is the utility vehicle and for that purpose it is amazing look at this lots of water still see that's what this is the best thing about this thing you can just truck on through you know, splash through all of the crap, and it's it's really quite gratifying just to, to smash through a big puddle of dirt. I love that. That's the best thing about about this thing. You ready? Some more. Oh, power! <laughs> That's the best thing about it. You know, you can smash through stuff and just don't care. In fact, there's something quite gratifying about turning up in a really dirty Range Rover. You know, you feel you're getting your money's worth. I haven't actually taken my own car off-road, uh, but as part of the ownership experience when you buy a Range Rover is, you get invited uh, to um, this amazing off-road course uh, for Range Rovers. You can go out and test drive a Range Rover and do some proper off-roading. So if you happen to own one and you haven't done this experience, go and Google a place called East Nor Castle, okay? And Land Rover have a base there, like a proper like HQ for off-roading. And honestly, the experience is fantastic. You get to experience the capabilities of these cars without having to use your own car. And that's always a win, you know? <laughs> so, because they do get fairly beat up. I mean, you are in water above the bonnet, you're going over boulders. Uh, often sliding down stuff, but it's, a, it's an incredibly impressive demonstration of just how amazing these things are off-road. And you know what, even if you're not going to use your car for off-roading, there's something quite satisfying and almost reassuring about knowing that what your car can do, just in case. So while this car is, of course, very plush and very luxurious, don't let it fool you because this thing is basically a Bentley which has mated with a tractor and <laughs> its off-road ability is incredible. This has software called Terrain Response 2. 2 because I presume it's the second generation of this software. And what it does is rather than you having to know what settings to put the car in to best suit the sort of terrain you're on, Terrain Response 2 analyzes it all for you. So you literally just put it in drive, go off-roading, and it appropriately allocates the right torque and grip and slip to each wheel, dependent on what it's doing. So you can grab your gin and tonic, swan across your country estate, and go to your lake fishing. It's absolutely no problem at all or you could get off McDonald's car park on the M6 service station when it's snowing. Either way, it's pretty handy stuff. There's definitely something about getting into a Range Rover, especially when you're driving it. it. It alters your mood. You sort of automatically presume that you've just rolled off your sprawling country estate. Jeeves has packed your bags and you're off on a destination of glory and Britishness as one sort of assumes a certain demeanor upon rolling around in the, uh, in the, the Range Rover. Isn't that right, sir? Jolly good show, old chap! Aha! Uh -huh. Fourth two and whatnot! <laughs> Another great thing about the Range Rover is that the driving position is very high up and, you know,
know, when you're in this tranquil world and you're sort of swanning along these country lanes, you can see over the hedge tops and just that different perspective of your sort of driving route being sat up high is a nice experience. It's great. To sum it all up, the Range Rover is a tranquil place in which to sort of meander. And it, uh, it does that very well. And at the same time, it'll take you off-roading if you want to. Chances are you won't, but it's nice to sort of know it's there. It looks cool too. It does look cool. I mean, there's something, you know, awfully regal about it. You know, corgis and whatnot. As I mentioned, they do slot into any format. And I think that's the best thing about the car is that it's a very versatile cruiser. All right, guys, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time, hopefully, if the weather holds out in the GT3. So, take it steady. See you later. Ciao.